Don't you tell me that it wasn't meant to be Call it quits, call it destiny Just because it won't come. Excuse me, is it okay if I uh What do you have there? Oh, it's a it's a calculator time machine. Damn it. Excuse me, is it okay if I, uh... Yeah, sure. <sighs> oh, this is, um, a widescreen telephone. That's not normal. But I don't like normal. I'm Arthur. I don't like guys whose name starts with the letter A. It doesn't fit my size. Oh. Okay, then. I'm the brown. Dang. I'm LeBron. Okay. So what's your sign? It's gotta be pi over two, cause you're the one for me. All right. You have big eyes, small face, I like. Why are you so mean? I'm not always mean, sometimes I'm median, but it really depends on my mode. All right. You're a real cutie pie. All right, nah. I'm no mathematician, but I'm real good with numbers. Can I have yours? No. Okay. Are you the square root of negative one? Because you can't be real. But I can't imagine a life without you. All right, doesn't work. Are you the square root of two? Because I. F Damn. Are you the square root of two? Because I feel irrational when I'm around you. Nope. Pause. What you're seeing now is a classic case of no ris- <clears throat> Sorry, Arthur, I mean this is a classic case of binomial distribution, which also happens to be exactly what we're learning about in today's lesson. What a coincidence. To understand the binomial distribution, we must unpack its four assumptions. Number one, each trial is independent of the others. This means the outcome of one trial does not affect the outcome of any other trial. Number two, each trial has only two possible outcomes, success, aka successful RIS, or failure. So whatever you've been doing, these outcomes are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Number three, there are a fixed number of trials. Let's call these N. So far, you've had 10 trials, so N equals to 10. Number four, the probability of a certain outcome, such as success, is denoted by P. This remains constant for each trial. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt this time, Arthur, and say that your probability of successful RIS is 0.25. Important notice, binomial distribution can only help you calculate the probability of one outcome. So to find the probability of failure, let's call this Q, is one minus the probability of success, which equals to 0.75. This works because there are only two possible outcomes, meaning that Q plus P must add up to one. So, in mathematical notation, we can say that the discrete random variable x has a binomial probability distribution with n trials and probability of success p. In Arthur's case, x is binomially distributed with 10 trials and a probability of success 0.25. The mathematical notation for binomial distribution can be translated into the following formula. If we try and conceptually understand this formula, it's actually quite simple. Since p is the probability of success, the probability of succeeding twice would be p to the power of 2 or p to the power of 3 for 3 times and so on. If the number of successful attempts we're looking for is x, then the probability is p to the power of x. However, we also need to take into account the failed attempts. If the probability of failing is q, then, when the number of trials is n, the probability of failure with x successful attempts is q to the power of n minus x. Finally, we need to account for the different combinations. For example, if we wanted to find the probability for Arthur succeeding three times, he could have succeeded the first three times and failed the next seven, vice versa, or any of the 10c3 possible combinations. As such, we have the formula depending on the number of successful attempts we are looking for. So far, Arthur has had zero successful attempts. Yeah, it's looking pretty rough, I can't lie. So let's calculate the probability of this actually happening. Going back to the general formula, we can plug in p equals to 0.25 and n equals to 10. We also know that q equals to 0.75. Finally, x represents the number of successful trials, which is zero. We can now find the probability to be 0.0563 or around 5.63%. We could apply this to any number of successes from zero to all 10. Wow, Arthur, the fact that you managed to get zero successful attempts is kind of crazy. But what if we were more ambitious and wanted to figure out the probability of succeeding in at least half of the trials? We totally believe that Arthur could get busy with it. 
For at least half, we would be finding p x greater than 5. We could do this by summing p x equals to 5, p x equals to 6, p x equals to 7, p x equals to 8, all the way up until 10 to get a final answer of 0 0.781. Though this answer is correct, there's a much faster way to do this. Let's bring out our time machines, haha, <laughs> or, I mean, our GDCs. To find a probability for a certain value of x, press second, distribution, scroll down until you find a, then get to the binomial PDF function. Press enter. This screen will have three inputs. Input accordingly, then press paste. Now, to find the probability that Arthur succeeds in at least half of the trials, or the probability for a range of x values. For this, we can follow the same steps, but scroll until we see b, binomial CDF, then press enter. Binomial CDF stands for Binomial Cumulative Probability and can help us save a lot of time. This function gives you the probability there will be 0 to x successes in n trials. In other words, it gives the probability of observing less than or equal to x successes in n trials. Now, back to your regularly scheduled activity. I'm pretty good at math, and I'd say you have a significant figure. What? If you were a function, I'd be your asymptote, because I don't always tend towards you. Cool. Nope. I'm pretty good at algebra. Can I replace your x without asking why? Uh... Okay. My love for you is like dividing by zero. Can't be defined. Damn it! It was nice meeting you. Doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Try, try, just because it won't come easily. Doesn't mean we shouldn't try.